All right, boss mates, sailors. Today I'm putting an eye splice in 3 8 inch double braided nylon. If you've never done this before, it may look a little confusing. Stick it out to the end. And uh, if you're still a little confused, got any questions, drop it in the comments section below. For you boss mates out there, this information, it comes out of your NSTM 613. That's your Navy ship's technical manual. But today, the instruction I'm going to be using is coming from your rate training manual. That's your nav ed tray 143. 43. Let's get our materials together. Let's get started. Step one, grab your masking tape, pull a little bit off, and put one layer of tape around your bitter end. In my case, the bitter end was uh, melted, so I'm gonna cut that little melted part off. From the bitter end, using a tubular fid, measure one tubular fid length. Make a mark. That's going to be mark R. Make an R. Now that you have mark R, make a bend in the line for your desired eye size. And across from R, put an X. So I don't confuse you for this next step, I'm jumping to step four if you're following along in your book. I'm going to jump step four because I'm marking for the taper, might as well get it done while I'm there. If you look at the cover, you'll notice the cover is made up of right and left strand lines and sets of two for this one. Step four. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at mark R and we're going to go towards the bitter end. First, we're going to count eight either right or left strands in pairs. At eight, you're going to put a mark around the line, and that's going to be marked T. Starting at mark T, working towards the bitter end, count your right and left strands and mark every fifth right and left strands until you get to the bitter end. This is going to form your taper. Step two, we're going to tie a slip knot approximately five fid lengths from R. Now we got our slip knot, pick your line up at mark X and bend it sharply. And then start pulling the cover or separating the cover so you can expose the core. When you're doing this, make sure you separate it by the two pairs and don't split the pairs because you're going to pull the core through the cover at X. Take your time with this, it's no rush.
Step three. Now that you've got your core pulled out from your cover, you're going to take your cover and you're going to pull it back towards the slip knot. And then you're going to pull it back towards the better end. You're going to do this back and forth a few times so you can get the line to relax. Once you've completed that, on the core, where it comes out of the cover, you're going to put a line. That's going to be mark, mark one. Mark one is going to go all the way around the core. Now that you've got mark one done, pull more of your core out of your cover because we're going to start measuring from mark one towards the slip knot. And your next mark is going to be two. This is going to be a short fit length. In the same direction, from mark two, you're going to measure a short and a long fit length, and that's going to be mark three. Step five, now take the better end of your core and put it in the back of your fit. I'm going to put a little piece of tape just to help hold it. Now it's at this point you can put chafing gear on it. Or if you're using something small like I am, small stuff, you can put a snap hook. So if you're doing halyards, you want to put your snap hook on at this point. Insert the fit at mark two and come out at mark Step six, make sure you've pulled enough of your cover through your core so you can see mark T. Now, remove the fit if you haven't already. And starting at the bitter end, start removing the strands right and left that you marked earlier for your taper. Keep removing those, pulling those out until you get all the way back to T. Now that you've removed all your strands, take a pair of scissors and cut those strands. And this is creating your tape. Make sure you don't cut beyond Mark T though. Because I've been doing this for a while, I'm going to put a little bit of tape around the cover and the core at Mark T. Because I just don't want that cover to be pulled back through that core accidentally. Because if you do, 
it's going to be a pain in the butt trying to get that cover back through the core after you've already tapered it. Now our next mark we're going to make is going to be mark Z. This mark is going to be approximately a half a fid length from mark X. I tend to go one third of fid length uh, on the small stuff. On the big stuff like mooring lines, you need to follow the directions. Step seven, take your core and jam it in the back of the fid. Put a little bit of tape on it. Tape for the core to come out and your fid to go through. Take your fid, insert it at mark T, and come out at mark Z. When you're doing this, make sure you're fed and nothing catches on the fibers because if it does, it gives you a little bit of trouble later on, especially when you start trying to close it all up. At this point, you just got to keep on milking it and loosening up the cover and pushing it through. It'll go through, it just takes a little bit of time sometimes. When you get to your mark T to Z, you might need to use your pusher. Once you pull your fit out at mark Z, go back and remove that little bit of tape that you put around the core and the cover at the taper. At this point, your mark T it now becomes your crossover. Step eight. Now it's time to start closing this whole thing up. So start your slip knot, start milking your cover back of your core towards your eye. If you need to and you're doing big stuff like mooring lines, you might want to secure your eye to something a little bit more permanent. You can take another piece of line and attach it with a clove hitch or whatever you need at your crossover and take that to power. That will decrease the diameter of the core and you'll be able to melt the cover back of the core a lot easier. If not, get a mallet and start hitting it. Take your time, don't rush this. Uh, it can be a slow process, depending on how old the line is and how much time you give it to relax before you started working it. But when it goes, you're doing a mooring line, you'll know when it goes.
once you got the cover milked over the core and that crossover synced in to that cover, then you can cut the core at mark Z and then milk it back into the cover. We're not done yet. The next thing we need to do is a locking stitch. In my case, I'm just going to use a little bit of cell twine. I'm going to stitch it in real quick and we'll be done. If you're doing a mooring line, you need something a little bit bigger. In my day, we use shot line because your locking stitch size should be about the same size as your cover strands. lock and stitch in you're good to go it wasn't that hard and there you have it 
You can play it in ice splice and double braided nylon. Do me a favor, guys. Hit that uh, subscribe button for me. I appreciate you guys watching and any comments that you might have left.